Hello and welcome into the Knicksverse. My name is George and if this is your first time here or you've been here before but haven't subscribed yet, please do so and turn on the notification bell so you're alerted when I go live or drop a new video and please thumbs up and drop the comments. I love the comments, they help me a lot. Ah, uh, man, good luck. This, 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 this is the reason I mean, uh, not the reason, it's a reason why I love this particular team. A game like tonight, the Knicks, I mean, what a day. I mean, it started off with Julius Randle announcing he's getting so, uh, shoulder surgery. Uh, you know, there's a lot of Knicks fans that are walking around in shock, you know, not shock, but at least dismay, you know, like wondering, oh man, do we ever get a break? You know, can... Uh, our team ever win the chip? Well, if tonight tonight it was an indication. Tonight was a resounding response to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. This team has the ingredients already. Even though Julius Randle is out for the rest of the season, he will be back next season. He will be back. And the team that is already here is a team that never stops fighting that never quits and we cannot quit on this team we cannot quit on this team tonight this team was once down by 21 points against the sacramento kings who had the same exact record as we do and yet this team was able to turn it around and win this game 120 109 fantastic result we got highlights we're gonna get into it right now let's go here we go these are the current standings as they sit at the moment. The New York Knicks are now tied with the Orlando Magic for the fourth uh, seed. They own the tiebreaker because we lost three games to them. We only won one. So we're down, you know, I mean, we're down technically to them. However, there's a lot of games left. We still have six more games in this season. And three of them are against the Chicago Bulls. That's right. In which actually we are playing tomorrow night in Chicago and the Knicks have done very well against the Bulls I think we can we could easily you know get two of those three wins out of that, that series maybe we can even sweep them this is a possibility I'm not gonna like put that out there, but you know it's possible it's possible so right now the New York Knicks all we need to guarantee that we don't fall into the play-in is one more win one more win of the final six games of this season. Very possible for this team. Very possible. And it probably will happen tomorrow night. It probably will happen tomorrow night. And the beauty of this all is, is that it will then, once we get that 46 to win, hopefully, Thibs can start, like, uh, not playing guys as much as he has been. Currently, Josh... Hart is playing with an injured wrist, and meanwhile, he had a amazing fucking game. Amazing fucking game. But this guy, first of all, the only reason we're even in this situation is because of this guy. This guy, yes. Is he a defensive liability? Yes. Do teams try to, uh, you know, to seek him out in terms of like switches, matchups to get you know, him matched up on their better players? Yes. But guess what? It doesn't matter. Because your better player ain't better than our better player. This guy is a bucket no matter what. Look at that. 60% free field goal shooting. 35 points, 11 assists. Amazing game for Jalen Brunson. And we are going to get many, many more of those. We've had many, 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 many of those already. But this guy... Fucked up wrist. I don't know which wrist is fucked up for him. But look, 31 points, 10 rebounds, 8 assists. He can't shoot the 3. He cannot shoot the 3 right now because his wrist hurts him so much that he bypasses it. And yet he can st he still... This is what I wanted from him. I wanted him to figure... Okay, look, so you can't shoot the 3. So figure out another way to give us some points. We need points from you. You can't be our starting power forward and not give us any buckets. Especially in lieu of what happened today. Julius Randle's gone. He opted for soldier, uh, shoulder surgery. So now this man, it's upon this man to give us the points in the production. Or let's say this. On the balance sheet, 
it's up to him to give us the upside at the end of the game in terms of input, defensive and offensive input into a game and the result being he ends up on top and the Knicks end up on top. And that's what he provided tonight. And that's what he, he's going to continue providing that. This guy is a warrior, not a Golden State warrior, <laughs> but he's a warrior in his heart. And that is a beautiful part of him. We are lucky to have this kind of a guy on this team. This is the kind of this is an old school type Knicks type of player. Love it. Love it. All right, here are the stats. Let's get to the highlights before we get into this. Here we go. All right, it's, I should have edited that out. <laughs> so the game started a little interestingly here. Look, Brunson already on the floor. This guy, his durability is probably the single most important thing for us as a, as a franchise at this moment, considering what happened to Julius Randle. And by the way, Julius, I know you're not watching this, but I, I gotta, I, I'll just say this to you, bro. I love that you wanted to come back. I love it, honestly. And I'm sure most Knicks fans, uh, all of us, respect that. And it was a valiant attempt. You weren't able to do it, but you know, you're you're there's always there's going to be next year. There is going to be next year. This team is set up for long-term success. And I do believe that with you back healthy and this guy, Jalen Brunson, and Josh Hart, and the rest of the guys on this team, we are going to, and OG, and Isaiah Hartenstein, and Mitch coming back, and Deuce, the way he's, like, ascended, and Dante, the way he's become one of the very top five three-point shooters in the NBA. This is, we are set up to win a championship, finally, in New York. There will be a parade at some point in the next couple of years in New York. And I'll be there. I can't wait. I cannot wait. But you got to get healthy, bro. You got to get healthy. I appreciate your attempt to try to come back to be a part of making that happen for this season. The odds of that happening this season have diminished tremendously because you can't come back. And that's fine. I get it. I get that. However... There is next year, but that all that said, I ain't quitting on this team right now. They're not quitting on the, on us. This team has fight. They will never say die ever, and that's why this is the most dangerous team in the playoffs. It is still the most dangerous team in the playoffs. It was already the most dangerous team, and it still is. Look at this shit. Look at this shit right here. The Knicks were once down by 21 points. It looked hopeless. And yet, they ended up winning by 11. Ah, 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 look at that. And a lot of it is because of that guy. He is at the center. He is uh, like uh, the center of how the, the whole Knicks universe access spins. But you still need others to come through. And tonight... Many, many others came through for the New York Knicks. What a beautiful result. What a beautiful game. I'm so glad that I didn't miss this game. My power went out as I was doing the pregame live with Schwinny Poo. And thank and shout out to Schwinny Poo for joining me. I hope he shows up again on the Knicks verse. And I and I would totally gladly uh, go on the, the Strickland pod. Absolutely. Was he? I mean, what I love, I love the way his mind works. This time, look at this. We're already up by 10 with five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. I knew this game was done. I knew this game. I knew we had this win in the pocket, in, the, in, in our back pocket. Beautiful. Wow. What a tremendous victory. I, I, I didn't even look at any of the stats. And also, by the way, uh, Deuce got off to a very rocky start. I think he missed the first six or seven shots, but he recovered beautifully. He was able to give us, uh, for the game, Deuce McBride. He ended up uh, with, he gave us 12 points, three of 10, but he missed the first six shots. So that means he went four of seven for the remainder of the game. Beautiful. Josh Hart, 14 of 19 in 43 minutes of play. 14 of 19. Didn't even attempt a three point shot because he doesn't, he can't shoot that far. 
at this moment because his wrist hurts that much and yet he was able to gut it out. Beautiful. All right. Here you are. Here are the stats. Uh, Jalen Brunson was the high scorer of the game, as I showed before. 35 points for him. 12 of 20, 2 of 5 from the three-point line. The Knicks shot almost 43%, 43% from the three-point line, 12 of 28, 55% overall. Tremendous second half for the Knicks because in the first half, they got off. They were, you know, a little shaky. They only scored, uh, well, actually, uh, well, it's because... The Kings scored, lit them up for 60 points in that first half. Knicks came through with 52. You know, I mean, you know, when you look at the stats, they weren't that bad, but they let uh, the Kings go off. They, the, the Kings shot 65% in that first half overall, 53% from the three-point line, and what else did he get? 18 rebounds on us, 15 assists. They, everything was click, clicking for them, but the second half was a whole other story. The second half, their shooting percentage plummeted to 36.7%. Overall, 36% from the three-point line. Only could muster up 49 points. The Knicks finish a plus 19 in the second half because we lit up the Sacramento Kings for 68 points. We shot 62.5% in that second half. We shot 7 of 13 from the three-point line, which is good enough for almost 54%. Beautiful. We still struggle from the, th uh, the free throw line. But a lot of that is because of Mitch Robinson. Mitch, I mean, bro. <laughs> bro. Come on, Mitch. Got to hit those shots, bro. Just all you got to do is a little tiny bit more arc. That's all. Just a little feather feather that release a little more. That's all. Just not so. Ooh. Just let it slow down. Slow down the final let go of the ball with a tiny bit more arc. I think you'll up your f uh, free throw percentage by like 15, 20% just doing that alone. Just do everything you're doing now. Just release it a little. Just feather. Just slow down the final like half second of the let go. But arc it a tiny bit. That's all you got to do. Because we need you, bro. Because it's going to be a problem in the fourth quarters. It's going to be a problem. You're going to be just the first three quarters guy if you cannot start hitting free throws. That's shout out to, uh, you know, that's for you and Mitch. That's for Mitch. All right, let's keep going here. But uh, the plus minus, very interesting. The, the The starting unit minus McBride was all like double digit pluses. But then Precious Achua, a minus 17. No points for him. Zero points for him. But then you look at Bojan. Bojan came through with 12 points, but he was a minus 13. However, even though he was a minus 13, the moments that he was able to come through with some buckets were key moments. There were moments where the Kings were looking like they could just like run away with this game. And the Knicks were struggling to find another scoring, a source of scoring other than Brunson when Brunson was on the bench. And Bojan was the guy who came through. This was a good game for Bojan Bogdanovich tonight. If this, if he can repeat with maybe a little more efficiency, let's see, what did he, uh, no, he was five of seven, two of three, three point line. So like you can see, this is where the plus minus kind of lets you down because you can see in his 12 minutes, 12 points on seven shot attempts that should be like a huge like plus but it's not because he's coming in in the bench unit the bench unit struggles they don't have a cohesion but without him that that minus 13 that he was on the floor could have easily have been a minus 23 so shout out to bojan he had a good game tonight for himself now alec burks this is another example of how the plus minus can be a little wonky in an individual game, but not over time. Over time, it definitely tells the story. But tonight, zero points for Alec Burks, but he finished a plus nine, even though he only played nine minutes. <laughs> Bizarro. Bizarro. The Sacramento Kings, uh, Darren Fox finished with 29 points, but he needed 26 field goal attempts for that. Eh, that's, not the, that's not atrocious, but I wouldn't uh, necessarily uh, be shouting that out if I was him. He shot uh, 20, uh, 40, 
42.3% overall. Buddy Schaffer on the three-point line, 46.2%. So, he, you know, he was tonight uh, uncharacteristically a marksman from the three-point line. But nobody else stepped up too much in terms of uh, overall scoring for the Sacramento Kings. Well, I guess they had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys in double figures, and they still lost the game. Ooh, I'd hate to be on that plane, the Sacramento plane, wherever they're going, because that is some dismal result. That tells me that they did not play good defense. Here are the team uh, stats, comparisons. The Knicks shot 55% tonight, 55% overall. They shot only from the free throw line 69%, but luckily the Kings were worse. They shot 58.3%. The New York Knicks shot, uh, oh my God, the Kings and the Knicks shot the exact same percentage from the three-point line, a very high 42.9%. Beautiful. Uh, that's wow. That's interesting. Uh, the points in the paint, the Knicks won that. They were a plus 20, 40 to 60. The fast break points, the Knicks won that, 19 to 10, plus 10 right there. So the points in the paint, the Knicks lost that by seven. We gave up 26 points. No, uh, no, actually, that's the reverse. I read that incorrectly. The New York Knicks were a plus seven. Sorry about that. That, the way they put that stat in ESPN, it's a little weird. It's it's like nonsensical. The rebounding, 39 to 35. Not that many rebounds in this game. Well, when you look at the efficiency and the shooting, it's, it's easy to see why. All right. Oh, watch party Sunday. It's become even more important now because of this game, this win. Uh, when I did the pregame live with Schwinny Poo, which was fantastic. Shout out to Schwinny Poo for joining me on that. Uh, we, we both, like... We realize that, look, if the Knicks can win these first two games right now, the Kings game and tomorrow's game against the Bulls, it's going to really ease the stress on whether the Knicks will fall into the play-in. I don't think there's a danger of it, but at this point, it's not completely decided. So the Knicks still need to win tomorrow, and they need this game against the Bucks. We have to win this game tomorrow, and it would be nice as a statement win. It's a statement win to take care of business against the Bucks on Sunday. And if you're in L.A., come join us. It'll be a blast. It's going to be giveaways. It's going to be a good vibe, cocktail specials, great food. And we'll just we'll get to watch our Knicks and have a good time watching the Knicks and cheering them on, especially because this team never quits, and we cannot quit on them. All right, thank you so much for watching this. Again, my name is George. Please subscribe, hit the thumbs up button for me, and drop your comments, and I will see you. Around the next verse.